Hello and welcome back to Crime and Justice. Tonight we're looking at the interview with Jane Soto that was done on the 18th of May. This is where she was giving what I say immunity. Well, it is immunity, but what they're saying is there's another word for it. Um, Everything up until up to that interview, anything past this interview, she says anything different in her that wasn't said before, she will she can get prosecuted. So everything up to this interview is cleared. Oh god, I've just got to go and turn my TV down.
Oh, right, so... When I first heard this interview, I thought, what? So what they're saying is you're not going to prosecute her for lying in a statement, an official statement, lying to the police, changing her story, sticking up for, like, POS. You know what I mean? Nothing. Now, the way she answers these questions, you will hear, you will find that you can tell she's been, her, her lawyer has worked with her. Because now she's answering the questions, yes, no, yes, not sure, don't know, and all this law, you know what I mean? So she is not, she's not very so open in this interview. Now, bear in mind, I think by now, oh, down he was arrested in February, March, April. Yeah, I think by now he'd been charged with, I think it would be by now, May the 18th, he would have been charged with the murder, or I should say, because I'm on YouTube, the unaliving of Madeline. Right? So... As I said, we're going to watch this interview. If we've got enough time afterwards, because I don't want to go on all night, but if I've got enough time, I'm going to put the interview on by... It's an enhanced, it's an enhanced recording of an interview given by the father. Another interview by the father. Okay? So, because you've got a stepfather, on this, on this type, on this video I watched, there's a stepfather, right? Because that, this guy was a stepfather, because he married Jane. And then you've got her bio father. Now, that's an interesting one as well, the bio father. Right? So, I don't want to go into too much... Into that. I want people to make their own decisions upon him. Right? So, let's pull this up. Look at this. I'm all ready tonight. I'm whizzing away tonight. I've got all sorted. Right? This is, again, where is it then? Credit to Grizzly Tree. Oh, oh, God's sake. What's just found? Oh. <laughs> right. It's credit to Grizzly Tree Crime. If you haven't already, please go over to her channel and subscribe. If you are following this case and you want to know all the information, go to her channel. She's got the lot. She does map time. She's got a timeline. She's got all... The documents, and she goes through all the documents. Every that like eight hundred odd page document, she took three videos, three lives to do that, and she went through the whole lot. Right? She's probably got more than what I got because uh, she paid for it. Where well, I went online and got it off uh, this other site, so I didn't get all the photos. Right. And a lot of the other stuff. So she got all the photos, everything. So please, Grizzly True Crime, go over to she. She's really. I've been following her now for what a couple of years. I've been subscribed to her for a couple of years now. And uh, I think she was one of my first channels. I started watching. Right. Uh, Actually, I started watching her when she was doing, when there was this one guy, I can't think where it was now, but he was a border patrol officer, and he young alived his mistress, because he was married, and he young alived his mistress, he tried, he gave, injected, so they say, injected his little boy. His, his 
Look, Borat, he had with the mistress. He did something in his leg, and his leg went numb to the point where this little boy had stopped walking. And then literally about, what, two weeks later, because the little boy wasn't able to walk very good now, he's in the push chair and she's arranged to meet him and he killed her. And then, yeah, he killed the little boy as well. Yeah. So he got sent down and I was watching the court case while she was uh, streaming it. And I think possibly she may have got been the one that I thought, you know what, I want to be able to do this. I want to be able to stream these cases on a, on a channel right, and discuss it, pick it apart, everything. So I think she's mainly one of my reasons I, I can say I probably got this channel put together. I'll never be as good as her, never be as good as her, but... She's the one who got me hooked on true crime. But I was already hooked on true crime. I really was. But to open a channel up and start your own channel up on true crime. Yeah. Anyway, we're going to watch this. Let's see if I can get this bigger. Yes, I can. Uh, we're going to watch this. And I will stop it here and there and whenever. So, just like to say hello to those on X who are here watching and those on YouTube. Don't be shy, come forward, say hello. I think you can comment on X as well, but you just, it'll come up on my screen, but you won't see it. You won't see any of the comments. Right, you won't see if anyone else has commented or anything. So, if you want to see what everyone else might comment, come and join me on YouTube. But you can comment while on X and it just come up on here. So, if you've got an opinion, a view, something you don't like, something you agree with or don't agree with, let me know. Anyway, let's get on with this. No more chit-chatting. Oh, yeah, I just want to tell you this. I've got to tell you this before I forget again. Yesterday... I don't go out very often, as I've said. And I went to one shop. I was fine. Then I come out of that shop and I was walking along, nonchalant. Wasn't taking in what I, my surroundings. Well, I was, but I wasn't. And I automatically walked into this one shop. Knew what shop it was, because I knew why I was going in there for. But then I was fine. Oh, okay. So I walked in. I'm not joking. I hadn't even got a... Th I think I was like a third the way up this aisle. And I just felt this panic come over me. I just had to grab what I needed, pay for it and get out of that store because I knew I was going to have a big, big, big panic attack. I thought, I was fine. And all of a sudden, like that, just come on, mate, I thought, I hate this pig in shop. Guess what shop it was? Home Bargains. Yep. I hate Home Bargains. Now, let's Good morning. Go. We are at the State Attorney's Office in Kissimmee. It's 8.57 a.m. It is April 18th, 2024. I am William J. I am the Division Chief for the Homicide Unit. With me is Danielle Pinnell, also from the Homicide Unit in Kissimmee. Can the detectives identify themselves? Detective Mark Morris. Detective Kyle Smallwood. And with us is... Jennifer With you. All right. We went over some things before we went on the record and told you the opportunity to ask any questions that you need to ask. Um, if you need a break to consult with your attorney, that is absolutely fine. We'll all step out of the room, turn off our recorders, and let you exercise your constitutional right to have counsel. There's no problem with that. There's water fountains here. There's restrooms. I don't know if you're a smoker or not, but like if you get desperate, we can make an outside break time, but we are kind of under time constraints. Um, with that all said, would you raise your right hand, please? Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. 
This is an investigative subpoena, so you've been compelled to be here. And in our country, under the Fifth Amendment and Fourteenth Amendment, as applied to you under the Florida uh, Constitution as well, you cannot be forced to incriminate yourself. So anything you say today can't and won't be used against you unless you just don't tell us the truth. And I've already explained to your attorney, Mr. Bark, whether or not you've made any inconsistent statements in the past, that, that is dirt under the bridge. And either a misdemeanor was committed or it wasn't. But we're not going to be using that as, as a basis of some sort of perjury. By now that's where I think is disgusting. They know she's perjured herself. You know what I mean? They know that. So why do why have they wiped that under the bridge? Because they don't need her evidence against that POS. They've got enough evidence against him to send my wife for life. You know what I mean? As for the on alive in Magdalene, have they got enough evidence to say he done it? I don't know. They know that his car had uh, a puncture. They know that his car was seen in the vicinity, in that area where her body was found. His car was seen in that vicinity. Um, they know Jen Soto's car was driven around about 3 o'clock in the morning, on the Tuesday morning. Again, up at that area where her body was, right? And Jenna said, Stefan used her car, her car that black night. So they got that, right? Unless they just want her to say who you to put her up on the stand and say, okay, so who you who was driving that car? Uh, Tuesday morning, in the early hours of Tuesday morning. Was you driving your car? No. Uh, who, do you know who could have? And she, that sort of thing. If that's what they're aiming at. But they don't need a testimony to send him down because they've got more than enough. You know what I mean? Evidence to send him down for life anyway. False statements, because you those other charges wouldn't be perjury anyways. Um, so the most important thing today is to tell the truth. I also explained derivative use immunity, which means if you said that there was a gun, and obviously there's no gun in this case, buried in your attorney's yard, we couldn't go dig up that gun if you told us that, oh yeah, there was the, the gun that was used is right there. We wouldn't be able to do that. We would have to show that we learned all those things independently from this interview. Okay? Do you have any questions? All right. So let's get started. Before you start, let me just make sure we're clear on the record. I had, off the record, we had discussed our position on the concerns we have. Ms. Soto was interrogated by law enforcement previously. Um, she was under a tremendous amount of duress and stress being that her child was missing and that she was informed was found deceased. Um, there's been media hysteria about this. There's been people asking for her to be prosecuted, tarred, feathered, executed. I've just noticed some of Look at the picture on the screen. Look at the glasses. They're very similar, aren't they? Very similar. Hmm. Oh well, just saying. Um, and so with that said, we have the concern that you brought up about um, if there's something said inconsistent today, not being used against her for filing a false police report. Um, right, so for example, if she said something that was false then and we have no idea that it was false now before this interview but she comes in and admits that it was false today we can't use these statements or that admission that it was false against her just like we couldn't use anything else against her um, from this interview okay okay all right so what they're saying is if you've got any information that you've told us that is false let us know now because after today if you turn around and say well that was false. 
they will take you down. They're going to have you. So if you've got anything that you've said in the past from the time Maggie went missing to the time your body was found up until today, anything you've said that is false, let us know today. My understanding is that on February 25th of this year, you were working at uh, the hotel on on Disney property out at Coronado Springs. Yes. Yes, Out loud and loud enough to get caught on the report. I know you're upset. I know. Yes. All right. And did you get off at 10 p.m.? Yes. All right. Did you go directly home? Yes. About how long does it take you to get home? About 25 to 30 minutes. And when you get home, who is downstairs? Anybody? You have a two story. Is it a townhome? Is that the best word for it? Yes, yeah, it's a townhome. If anybody is downstairs, who is downstairs? I saw my daughter Madeline and uh, Stefan. Do you recall what Madeline was wearing? No. And do you recall what Steph? Right. Now, when you listen to this, you probably come, you, hopefully you might come up with the same conclusion I'm thinking. I don't think she saw Madeline on Sunday night. I really don't. I think she come in, nonchalant as she always is, grabbed something to eat, went to her bag, took a mega, ate her food, had your medication and went to sleep. Full stop. You know what I mean? I don't think she worried about, oh, where's Madeline? Is she in her own bed? Where is she? I don't think she worried about that. Stefan was wearing. When you get home from work, you need to kind of eat a late dinner before you get settled in for bed? Yes. And do you eat there at your home? Yes. What do you eat? I think I had a, a pub sub waiting for me in the house. I say how much. Yeah, that would be hilarious if someone says that to me because my daughter would throw me up and go, she'd gone out, she's gone out with a, part, a fellow at the time, and she'd phone up and go, Mom, we're getting a takeout. What do you want to eat? And I'll go, food. And she'll go, I know you want food. What? what? <laughs> well, don't ask me what I want to eat. You know I want food. Just tell me where you go. Say, so, we're going to this. Do you want the usual, what I'd normally have from that place? Or do you want this? You know what I mean? Don't ask me what I want because the answer is going to be food. Okay. Did anybody join you in sitting down and eating? No, I ate in my bedroom. Okay. Did it look like anybody else had recently cooked food or eaten any food there that night? Uh, from what I saw, no, I, no. I didn't see anyone cooking, or it didn't look like anyone had been cooking. Okay. Um, I believe in one of your former interviews, you mentioned that Madeline might have gone over with you kind of what she got at the birthday party since you didn't have the chance to go because you were at work. Mm -hmm. When and where does that occur? That occurs right after I get home. It occurs in my bedroom. Everyone's in my room. Um, and so by everyone. So you just said. When they asked you, do you did you eat alone or did anyone join you? You said no, I ate alone in my bedroom. Yep. Now she's saying we was all in the bedroom. Let's just be clear, since I understand you have some roommates. So what do you mean by everyone? Okay. Uh, Madeline, Stefan, and myself were in my bedroom. Okay. At this point in time, do you recall what Madeline was wearing? I I don't know. Let me ask it a different way. Can you tell me whether or not she was wearing a long sleeved green sweatshirt and jeans? Oh, no. Okay. Would she have kind of been in her bed gear or do you think she could have still been in the dress that she wore to her birthday celebration? 
she would have been in pajamas. I can't recall the exact pajamas, but she would have been in pajamas. Um, she, she had already, by this point in the evening, she had already showered and changed out of that birthday dress. And was it your understanding from your sister that she had gotten dropped off about 8.30, she being Madeline? 8.30, 8.45, something around that time, yeah. And what's your understanding as to when Stefan had gotten there? If you know, if you don't, don't guess, it's fine. Actually, while well, he's saying that this is important, so there's things that you might think should be a certain way because of, that's just the way things go. Um, but don't just guess based on past history that mm -hmm. it's the same as what happened on that particular day. If you don't know, you don't know. Then, yeah, I'm not sure exactly what time he, he got there. Okay. You were at work, so I just didn't know if, like, sometimes families check in, hey, I... Oh, that's a change, isn't it? Oh, he got there about 8.45. No, all of a sudden, she don't know. Hmm. Good one, Jane. Maybe it, but text or by phone call or anything like that you do you not remember anything i don't remember okay how long were the three of you in your bedroom i'm gonna say for about 30 minutes okay. um yeah and did madeline tell you about the party she was did, really happy. did she tell you what uh food they had there at the party or? yeah she um they had her favorites. What are her favorites? Um, Puerto Rican food. So, arroz con gandules. All right. So, you're going to have to translate to English. <laughs> I know frioles and arroz and a couple other things, but help me out. Um, if I recall correctly, she had requested rice. It's, it's a type of for those that are joining for on X, we are listening to, I believe, I, don't, I haven't heard of any ever audio of Jen on any other interviews. This is the last interview she gave to the police. And she's got her lawyer there, and they have literally given her immunity. Immunity. This is a mother who couldn't even tell you what her daughter was wearing, whether, you know what I mean? What she was wearing. Like, you know when you said, what was she wearing? She, why didn't she say she was in her pyjamas? You know what I mean? Why can't she just say then, oh, she was in her pyjamas? But I don't know what one. They had to literally get her to say... Rice and beans. Mm -hmm. It's rice with pigeon peas. Okay. Uh, and benil, which is... I'm not sure how that is. It's a pork, but I'm not sure how they cook it. Okay. Um, so it's cooked pork. Um, that's typically what she requests for her parties. So that's like her favorite meal. Okay. And... What kind of gifts did she get? She got a lot of money. Okay. That's what she ended up showing me. I think she had a few trinkets, but like most of it was just a big wad of money that she was so excited for. All right. Yeah. Um, is there any particular reason Stefan couldn't uh, make it up to the party? Because it's my understanding he didn't exactly work or anything. Um, he wouldn't have been invited. Um, the party was held at my mom's house, and my mom and him have never had a great relationship. She's never liked him. So he wouldn't have been invited to the party at all. It just would have been my whole family, and then me. If I hadn't worked, I would have been there. Okay. Now, during this 30 minutes that the three of you are in your bedroom, is Madeline engaging in any of her kind of nighttime routine or, you know, getting ready for bed? What else is going on, if anything? Um, we spent a long, a long time talking about gifts and having her show me, and then we counted out her money. Um, I can't remember if she had finished with all of her bedtime routine. Okay. Does she brush her teeth at night? Uh, in the shower. In the shower? Okay. Uh -huh. And that occurred before you got home? Yeah. And my understanding with her nighttime medication is that's that's something that you would like to make sure she had bedtime or so? Something like that, yeah. So were you present for that occurring or did that occur after you got home? <clears throat> that that did not occur on my call. Um I believe 
I had instructed Maddie when she got home to go ahead and take them herself. Okay. And is that something that she's allowed to do? Um, from time to time, yeah. When you say they, is there what my understanding was there was some hydroxyzine? Is there anything else she takes at night? Just hydroxyzine. All right. And the Miralax is when? Miralax is. So that would have been earlier while you were at work too, if she took it? Yeah. May not have because she was at the party? Yeah, because she's been, because I had been training at work that week and we have been going back and forth with my mom's a lot, the Miralax wasn't consistent. Okay. All right. All right. Now, Madeline, does she lay out her clothes for school the next day or is that something she gets in the morning, makes a game time decision like my kid? Typically, it is a game time decision morning of. Okay. What about this specific evening? Do you remember anything about it? Yes. This evening, we had, um, I had already discussed prior to Stefan coming. To you say, in the UK, when you, even in junior school now, right? Infants and juniors, like, P1, P2, upwards, the uniform. And I like uniform because it stops all these other children whose parents have probably got that bit more money from wearing the nice expensive brand clothes. And it stops the parents coming into school and saying, my son had this sweatshirt on and now look at what has happened while he's been doing painting or he's been doing this or he's fall over in the playground, you know what I mean? But don't wear expensive clothing to school. So I believe in uniforms. I just wish they'd make them a bit cheaper for parents because they're not cheap. It's really not cheap. And when you've got little ones in P1 and P2 who are constantly growing, they are constantly having to buy new sweatshirts for my one grandson, new tra trousers, it's literally he's going through pairs of trousers within weeks. Within weeks, because he's either ripping them or something. You know what I mean? And they're not cheap. He's only six coming on to seven, but he's in size ten to eleven years. That's how big my grandson is. As I call him, and only I'm allowed to call him. The tank. To visit that he was going to help me take my to school that day. Um, so because I knew that that was what was going to happen that night, I had asked Maddie, pick out your clothes, have everything ready, have your backpack ready, your water bottle, everything you need ready so that that way you could just grab your stuff and head out. It won't be too much, too much of a hassle in the morning. Um, and so she did. She picked up her clothing. I asked her what she was wearing, and she told, she told me what she, what she had picked out. I said, okay, fine. All right, so she picks it out, but, but does she physically take it out of somewhere, wherever she stores her clothes, and put it somewhere? I'm not sure. Okay. I'm so, not sure if she took that clothes upstairs with her or anything like that. All right. So as far, you didn't see them in your room, and did you have the opportunity to kind of see her cubby part of the living room? Room to see if she had put them in on her bed or anything like that. I hadn't seen them. Does Matt she hadn't seen the clothes that she picked out for school, right? However, in Madeline, oh, um, oh, no. have like a water bottle or a hydro flask or whatever the kids call it that she likes to sleep with. And However, in one of her previous interviews, they pull her up. They said, "You state you didn't see Madeline in the morning." No, I didn't. But then you tell us what she's wearing for school. Yes, because I've seen what she was wearing because she picked it out the night before. So there's one lie. You know what I mean? And yet, everything she said before is now gone. Gone in the wind. Bring, bring, up, bring up or bring wherever she's sleeping? Mm. Typically not. That stays downstairs in her backpack, and then she'll clean it in the morning, and then fill it back up and leave it in her backpack. That typically stays in the backpack. Okay. 
favorite stuffed animal or stuffed animals, anything that always goes with her wherever she's sleeping? Uh, she does have a few stuffies and blankies. Um, did I see any that day? Yeah, specifically, did you see if she brought any of that stuff upstairs with her? Um, no, I didn't see any of that stuff upstairs. Now, separate question. Generally, habitually, like your attorney was saying, there's a difference between specific memory. But generally, would she do that? I'm not saying that you saw it that night. Generally, would she do what? Right. Have stuffies and blankets and her favorite stuff. Uh, yes. Uh, she typically would. So if Stefan says something like Maddie's building her nest and getting settled in, would that to you mean like her stuff is part of this nest? Or what do you think that would mean if you know? I'm not sure. Okay. Do you recall getting that text from Stefan that night that Maddie had settled into her nest for the night? My understanding was that at some point you told them it was time to go to bed. Yeah. Do you recall about what time that was? Around 11 o'clock. So that's consistent with getting home at 1030, having this half hour discussion and eating your pub sub? Is that a yes? Yes. All right. Do they comply with your wishes to go upstairs when you say that at about 11 o'clock? Uh, yes, they do. Okay. Um, Is there any further communication between either you and Madeline or you and Stefan about, all right, kids, it's time to go to bed, anything like that? Or was that the last you had heard from either one of them that night? I think at some point, Stefan comes downstairs to use the restroom and then goes back upstairs. But I don't, after that, I don't recall interacting. Or so she don't recall. Sending a text saying, get Maggie to go to sleep now. And that was about 11.30ish, 11.35ish. He then texts back, going, she's getting the nest ready, her nest ready, and she's going to sleep. And then she texts back, going, okay, good. She don't remember none of that. Or say anything, so. Okay. And my understanding is that you had some... Even though they have got proof to, of those texts. ...sort of parental controls over Maddie's phone. Is that accurate? I'm not sure by parental controls exactly. I, I didn't have any limits or anything on the phone set up. Well, like, for instance, if she wanted to install Game Pigeon, does that oh. have to go through you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So any permissions for any apps, you would have to ask me for all right, and does that ring a bell as to occurring that Sunday? Game Pigeon? Okay. All right, so that's, a, that's <coughs> the last time you hear from either one of them until the morning. My understanding is that Stefan comes down and is dealing with your dog. Is yeah. there, so is there any communication other than perhaps Stefan coming down to use the restroom? Um, is there any other communication that you have between Stefan and Maddie. Do you see them? Now I've, I've said communicate. Do you see them? Do you go up and check on them? Do you, do you see Madeline or Stefan from the point you kick them out at 11 p.m. until you see Stefan at 8 in the morning-ish is what you guess for the dog? Yeah. Um, no, I didn't. I didn't see them. Okay. Now, when you go to sleep, do you sleep through the night or do you kind of you know, wake up and not have consistent good sleep? I sleep through the night. Okay. So there wouldn't be any points in time where you get up and you're taking steps. Right. So if she sleeps through the night once she's took her medication, why does she feel it the need to send her daughter up to room four with Stefan so she could get a good night's sleep? She sleeps through the night. We're going to listen to the interview one of the um, uh, housemates gave. I'm not sure if we'll listen to it on this one. Might do, might not. Might be on my next live. Which won't be till Sunday night. Because I'm not live. I'm not going live Friday or Saturday night. Because I've got my grandson here. Anyway. So, 
still lying here. She still got lies, or what she said before we lies saying. Or just checking on your phone. But knowing that, I've got the paperwork here where it's got the information of the text messages. Look, you can't go back to sleep. As far as you remember, when you go to sleep, you're out until the dog thing in the morning. Did you hear or see anything during those hours um, involving Stefan or, or Madeline? I didn't hear or see anything. Okay. All right. What's the first thing? Sorry, my mouth is you remember when you wake up after having gone to sleep? I wake up to Stefan trying to put the leash on the dog. Okay. Now, is this the first time that you've ever woken up to Stefan trying to put a leash on your dog, or is that something that has occurred before in the past? I want to say this is the first time. Um, it's not normal for any of us to put a leash on the dog. Right. First time to her recollection, which I could believe is the first time, because Stefan didn't come in at 8 o'clock in the morning, because we know that. We know he was in his car, he was at the dumpster by 7.30ish, he was leaving the uh, complex about 7.40ish, so we know he wasn't in the, the apartment, in the house at 8 o'clock, so it's sometime between 7 and 7, well, any time between, say, 7 in the morning to 7.30, he came in to get the dog, to take the dog out, right? But that's still been brazen because he's got a young girl sitting in the car, on a live, in the front seat of his car. And now he's thinking, oh, I'll take the dog out for its walk. Because he doesn't want Jen coming out of that room. You know what I mean? He does not want Jen to come out of that room. He wants her to stay where she is. On the bed, because if he's on top of any, like, bed, couch, anything, he'll pee. He gets really nervous. You have to do it on the floor. So I found it really weird that he did that, but... All right, so let me ask it a little more broadly. Is this the first time Stefan's ever come into your room while you're sleeping to take the dog out for you in the morning? Uh... Can't recall something before. Okay. Did you find it unusual then? Or what did you think when this is occurring? When it happened, I think I was more. Uh, I found it off, but I was more worried over the dog. I was like, please don't pee on the bed. I don't want to do laundry. Okay. Um, so I was more anxious over that. Um, he put the dog on the leash and told me to lay down and go back to sleep. And okay. I said, okay. So were you not laying down when he tells you to go back and lay down? No. When when he got when he put the leash on the dog, I shot off the bed because I was going to help him. I was like, no, no, let me do it. And he's like, no, no, go back to sleep. I'm fine. I got this. Okay. I said, okay. Now, do you go back to sleep or do you check your phone or do anything? I think I go back to sleep. I look at it. In this period of time that you have been awoken by Stefan, do you hear or see anybody else in your household? I hear somebody in the kitchen. Um, I'm not sure who it was. I'm not sure who it was. Okay. Could um, you identify it by size, like their steps? Could you identify gender by their voice? Anything like that? Well, all I heard was sounds of like cabinets shutting, like some. Right, cabinets shutting. Well, we know the one housemate which we're going to listen to. I just don't think it'll be on this one. Will be. Uh, I'm sure she says she left about seven thirty, six thirty, six forty-five, or seven thirty, seven forty-five. I'm not sure, but she gone because she has to take her son over to her parents' house, who then takes her son to school, 
while she goes to work because she has to be at work at night, her housemates. Right, so um, if you heard voices, you know the other one because she doesn't speak a lot of English, she speaks more Spanish. So you can even hear it in, a, in the tone of her voice, in the way she spoke. If she's speaking English, you hear that Spanish coming through. You can know if it was Madeline's. And you definitely know if it was Stefan's. Somebody in there shutting, like looking for something and shutting. Okay. Um. Now, if your daughter had been awake, would she come in and say goodbye to you before school or not? Just let you sleep. I would have hoped she would have come by and say <laughs> goodbye to me. Um, I can't remember if this is one of the first times that Stefan actually took her to school, so I I would have hoped she would have said good, good night, but I'm not sure. All right, so do you fall back asleep? I do. And when do you wake up and how do you wake up? I wake up at like nine o'clock in the morning uh, to my alarm. Um, yeah, I wake up at nine o'clock in the morning to my alarm. Uh, I get ready, I think at around 9.30, 9.45, I leave for my doctor's appointment. Okay, so in this period of time from when you're waking up and getting ready, do you see anybody else in your home? At this point, I'm not too sure. I know throughout the day I've seen my room. I'm sure if I got up, right, and I knew my, say I had a partner. I don't, I don't want one. I'm quite happy as I am. Right. So, but I had a partner with, and I had a young child. And I knew my partner was taking the child to school, right? And I go up at nine. I'd be thinking, well, my daughter's at school now, so, right? I'm sure I'd remember seeing someone, if the someone was in my kitchen or in the living room or somewhere in that house downstairs because apparently she only went upstairs to do the washing, right? I would remember seeing someone. Yeah. hmm, let me think about that. in the kitchen cooking and doing her thing but i don't recall if I, it was at this time <clears throat> did you see your daughter this morning on the 26th no did you have any texts or phone calls or any other type of communication through any possible app uh, on your phone like hey mom love you at school whatever any communications from madeline Anything from her? Nothing. all right how about from stefan by the time that you wake up at nine any texts or communication from him? Maddie's dropped, I'm off to the game store or whatever he's doing. No. Um, I didn't hear back from Stefan until 10, like 10, 20 ish. And he had told me he left his phone at home that whole morning by accident. And I had asked him how the morning went, how was Maddie? And he let me know that this morning went great. We made great time. She got busy super quick. Uh, he was going to take her to McDonald's for breakfast, but she changed her mind. All she wanted to do was sleep in the car. So he let her sleep. He took her to school and dropped her off. Or he said he dropped her off. And that, that was it. And you had a 10-15 appointment for a blood draw? Yes. And did you go? Now, the question is, and this is a question a lot of people have been asking in this case, why was that POS there? Why? She wasn't at work Monday. She wasn't at work Tuesday. 
So she had all day just to chill out and have a little sleep if she wanted to. You know what I mean? Why did she need Stefan to come over to help with the dog and with Maddie? She's just said herself, oh, it's not like him to come and get the dog off, put the lead on the dog while he's on the bed. No, because if the dog wants a wee, the dog is going to come out and let you know he wants to go out. Let me out. They will let you know. Right? They'll either sit whining at the door, go running back and forth to the door. Sit looking at the lead. Let me out. I need a wee. You know what I mean? So, a dog will tell you. I know there's some dogs, especially when they're puppies, they don't. Right? They like, can't gang, have no control of their blood when they're puppies. They just pee anywhere. But you train them, and they learn, right? Now, this dog wasn't a puppy. From what I understand, it was not a puppy. Right, so she didn't need him to t- get t- to be there to take the dog for a walk. She could have got up at nine, got herself washed and dressed, quickly took a dog for a walk, let him do his business, right? Now, I know a lot of mums that would have just gone, all right, we'll just take him round by the lake here, put the big... With the pyjamas on, with a jacket on, and take the dog for a walk with their pyjamas on. They do that up in Scotland. Right? They do it down in England. <laughs> Not that I can't, I can't do that. I can't even take my trash down to their bins if I've got my pyjamas on. And there's some days I get up in the morning, I have a wash, and I can put fresh, like, they're not pyjamas, but they're just sort of, like pyjamas, what I would could wear for bed if I wanted, right? And I won't even take my trash down with them up. I will get properly dressed, right, which will take me about half an hour by the time I've got dressed, done my hair, got my shoes on, to take the rubbish down, which is a 10-minute job. Go right. anywhere else. So she didn't need stuff on there. Plus, if she got up at 8 o'clock, Right? Like she said, she woke up because he was coming in and putting the, getting the lead on the dog at eight. So she said, why couldn't she just get up at eight o'clock? See to Madeline, take her to school for 10 to 9, leave at the house at 10 to 9, drop her off at school. She still had 45 minutes to get from there to her doctor's. Why couldn't she do that? She didn't need stuff on there. So as she said in her last interview that we watched, uh, I'm just, that was just me being selfish. Yet yeah, once, hell of a selfish mother. There's many times when my kids were little, I didn't want to get up. Especially when the dad had been working, like, sometimes he used to work during the night at the airport. And so he'd, get, he'd come in about six o'clock in the morning. So I'll be he'd get into bed, and as he's getting into bed, I'm having to get up to see to the kids, right? And I thought, oh God, I don't want to get up. But I'd get up, and I'd see to my children. I'd walk them to school. I'd feed them, wash them, make sure they're dressed properly, walk them to school, come back, maybe do a bit of shopping on the way home. But I did it. For my kids. Why did she need Stefan? Prior to getting to your appointment for your blood draw, did you go directly there or not directly there? That's basically the question. Oh, I went directly there. Right. And back. after your blood draw, did you go directly back home? Yes. About what time did you get home? Sometime between 11 15 and 11 30. Did you have any other appointments or doctor's appointments later in the day? I was supposed to have had one, but I canceled it. When did you cancel it? That same day. Why did you cancel it? Because it was a $350 Botox appointment that I didn't want to spend the money on. I changed my mind last second. Okay. When you get home from your blood draw appointment, is there anybody else at your home? Um. Uh, Stefan was 
all right? And can you describe what he's wearing, what he's doing, his demeanor, what's going on? I can't recall what he's wearing. It might be a red shirt with a graphic on it. Okay. He's sitting in my bedroom on my desk. Prior to you getting there, he's in your room? Or is that where you guys go to talk? That he was hanging out there in my room. Okay. Um, my room is kind of like the general hangout spot. Okay. Um, I walk into my room. He's sitting there on the computer chair. Um, he's talking, acting normal, uh, asking about the morning and how everything went. And that he let me know the errands that he ran that morning or what he was up to. And what did he say he was up to? He said he had dropped Maddie off at school and then afterwards went to a vape shop so he can buy vaping things. Okay. But that the store wasn't open, so he waited a long time for them to open. They never did. So he drove around, killed time, and then eventually made it back to my house at like 10.20. Um, when later on while he was when i got home and he was home we started discussing um or he started telling me that he was going to go back out to run a few more errands in a little bit down 182 and he gave me the name of a few stores that he might stop at and i'm like okay um i asked him if he wanted to meet me at my house by 2 30 so that we can go pick up maddie from school together and he said, yeah, uh, he'll, he'll be back by 2.30. I said, okay. So was that the plan to get her together or was it ever discussed that he would get her alone? The plan was for, for us to get her together. Okay. All right. And so does he leave before you leave? Uh, actually, before this, while we were still discussing, while we were having the conversation on the in my room, he did mention at one point, oh, uh, while he was sitting there, that he had to reboot his phone or that he had to update his phone. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> Sleep on the tongue bag, Jay. Reboot. He was sitting there and he said he had to reboot his phone. Was that a slip of the tongue or was that the truth? And... What was it? He had to update his phone. So I said, I told him, stop avoiding it, do it. Like, it's a updates take a while. Like, do it. And while he was updating his phone, he said, I don't know what I did, but I just uh, factory reset my phone. Mm -hmm. And I said, that's weird. I didn't know that you could do that. He said, yeah, a button popped up and I pressed it and it just reset my entire phone. And I'm like, oh, that sucks. Um, so uh, does he leave before you do to go do these errands he was telling you about? Yes, he does uh, leave. Do you stay at home until it's time to go get Madeline? Yes. Do you hear uh, anything from Stefan while he's out doing these errands? Uh, no. So 2.30 rolls around. Is Stefan back home yet? No. At this point, I leave. Do you call, try and call him or text him or communicate with him? Yeah, I had been calling him, like, maybe starting... 15 minutes before I was supposed to leave just to see where he was. Did he answer? No. Um, I leave at 2.30. Around 10 minutes later, I get a phone call from him. And he said, I'm so sorry. I left my phone at home again on accident. Um, I was driving down 192 and my tire exploded or shredded and I had to pull over to one of the plazas and change my tire. Um, I hurt. He said he hurt his thumb doing that. Okay. And that, um, yeah, he was late and didn't make it back on time for that reason. All right. When you leave to go pick Madeline up at 2.30, do you take her phone with you? I do. And how is it that you come to get her phone to go with you? Um, at some point in the morning, I was organizing and putting things away, and I walked into her bedroom, and I saw her phone on her dresser. 
and I just assumed, oh, she must have left it here while getting dressed and forgot it. Okay. Was it on? Yes. And sometimes when you bump or move phones, the notification screen comes up. Mm -hmm. Did you happen to do that? And did you see if there was any incoming notifications that she had missed? I hadn't seen any, no. Okay. All right. So you go to school and due to time constraints, like an NFL football game, we're going to kind of jump ahead a little bit. My understanding is that you want to be first in line mm -hmm. and you have to get there early to do that. And I understand that. Yeah. She, does, she doesn't come out. She doesn't know. Did you call her phone? I did. Why did you do that? Because I forgot I had had it with me. I was like, where is she? Why isn't she out yet? So I start calling her phone and then I start realizing I'm hearing vibrating. And then I look down and I see her phone's with me. I'm like, oh, okay. how am I going to get a hold of her? Because I'm the first in line. The cars behind me already have children. They're full. They're waiting for me to leave. Okay. All right. So I'm going to kind of jump ahead. Did Madeline ever complain to you about believing that Stefan had taken her Christmas money? Yes. Tell me about that. Christmas money went missing. And we were both, um, it, I was, I, I don't even know how to explain this. We have collected all of her envelopes with Christmas money and consolidated it into one. I'll put all her money into one. Yeah. And then I said, I will put this somewhere safe. And I thought I had put it in my nightstand. A few days later comes Ryan, comes around, whatever. Um, we start looking for it or asking for it or something like that. And we can't find it. We can't find it at all. Um, so let me just narrow it down. Did she accuse Stefan of taking it? I'm not sure if she did directly. Okay. I, we, we, we both had the suspicion, but we're like, no, could he have? No, I don't think so. But I eventually found that money. Okay. I was just going to have the mystery end. All right. So you just started this job at Disney Coronado Springs like a week or two earlier. Is that right? Yes. And your sister and other family members would help with Maddie getting to school because of your job? Uh, yes, my mom, my mom, and my sister. Yes. Okay. Why is it that now Stefan on February 26th is coming up to help as opposed to any of your family members helping getting Madeline to school? Um, uh, I had asked for him to come and help me because I think I was working a lot of night, night shifts or like really late shifts. And, um, I just wanted the opportunity to see Maddie, like, cause I, I wanted to spend more time with my daughter throughout the week while I was working uh, versus had she had stayed at my mom's, I wouldn't have seen her all week. Okay. Um, so that was just me wanting to see her and spend time with her. Well, you had Monday and Tuesday off. All right. So you could have took, took her to school Monday. You could have took her to school Tuesday. And if you want a night on a Wednesday, you could have took her to school Wednesday. Right? And if you're working nights, then you're not going to see much of her anyway, because by the time you get home from work, she's be going to school. By the time she gets home from school, you'd be going, getting ready for work. So you're not going to be spending a lot of time with your daughter then. So, why could did Stefan have to come down for, like, to help? Plus, if she, if say you took it to school yourself on the Monday, picked her up, took it to school again Tuesday, picked her up, right? Took it to school Wednesday, then perhaps you could have picked her up from school and took her over to your mum's. She could have stayed at her mum's, your mum's, her grand's on the Wednesday, and the Thursday, and the Friday. All right. What's stopping you, the mother, going over to your mother's to see your daughter? Hmm? 
What's stopping you from popping over? Say you've got to be at work for, I don't know, 6 o'clock on the night or 7. I don't know how long the um, her hours were, but she said she was only part-time. So part-time hours wouldn't be that long. Yeah? So even you say you're working from starting work at 6 o'clock on the night or 7 o'clock, you could have gone over to your mum's, right, and spent, even if it was just an hour, one hour, you could have spent that hour with your daughter at your mum's. Because I'd like to know what you do with your daughter if she's at home. I don't think you'd be going out anywhere because you're too tired. Did Madeline, Madeline stay at your mom's house fairly frequently? Every few weekends here and there, like just for the weekend kind of thing. So like if she described it to her friends as like her second home and like kind of offer up it's better, better jacuzzi and pool, does that sound like that's the place? Yes. Where does Madeline sleep when she's over at your mom's? She will sleep in bed with my mom. Okay. Did she ever have sleepovers? Like have friends come over and sleep over? Slumber parties, no. Did she ever go and attend any? No. Is there any particular reason? I mean, she's a 12 year old girl on the cusp of being 13. Yeah, I, I've been very uncomfortable with sleepovers just because this I know me. what can happen. Anything can happen in a sleepover. Well, then you can be the host house like we kind of were. Uh -huh. Anything could happen in a sleepover. Uh, it was happening under your own fucking nose. You never hosted any sleepovers for her friends? For her friends, no. Did she ask about it? Yeah, she did ask. Was it probably a source of contention or arguments? Uh, it was... I guess what was the sort of argument was her and she wanted to really sleep over her best friend's house. And I was just, I just kept saying, no, 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 you never know what could happen. I don't know the dad. I don't know the brother. I don't know anybody there. Like, I, I don't know what can happen to you. So, um, just afraid. Well, why don't you get to know her friend, family? That's what I did. When my son, when we moved out, so my son and my daughter had to go to two schools, right? Uh, my son started the school, and about two weeks later, a new lad started, right? So my son and his lad hooked up, because they was new. They kind of jailed. So when we was waiting outside the school, or in the school playground to pick them up, my son and her son would come out, and they'd be talking, so me and her, his mother would get to talking. That's the problem when you pick your kids up in a school, in a car. You don't get to meet the parents. Why? Why don't you arrange for her friend to come over to yours with her mother one day and get to know them? Or arrange to meet out at a, I don't know, McDonald's or something. With her, a friend and her mother, or a friend and her, the father, get to know them that way. Because, sweetheart, it was going on under your own fecking nose and you didn't even know. Which I find totally unbelievable. Bit of her getting assaulted. Okay. Um, Did Madeline do her own laundry? Yeah. Did she cook for herself? I was teaching her how to make a few things, so I mean, yeah, she could, I guess. Okay. Why was Madeline doing her own laundry? Sturting. Like, I don't, I can't remember one day my kids did the wrong. They knew how to use the washing machine, don't get me wrong. Right, they knew how to use it. I think my daughter started doing, like, laundry as she got a bit older. I know they used to iron. Because my daughter said, can I do some iron? Oh, yes, he's the iron. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> you know what I mean? I know they used to do ironing. I've talked to Magic Cook. Um, 
my daughter started to cook because I was working weekends and I wasn't getting home till about one. I was working, was it 10 to 11 and 12, 12 to 1? Was it 9 till 2? I think it was 9 to 2 or 2. Right in the hospital. Saturday and Sunday. And I earned more working those two days than those working Monday to Friday day, working the same hours as me. Well, more hours than me, sorry. And I earned more on two days than they did in a whole week. So it paid to work just two days. But I was getting home about three o'clock. And it's like, I just literally fall on the sofa and I go, leave me alone, I'll cook dinner in a minute. But I wasn't getting dinner cooked till about seven-ish, which was a bit late. Because they, as I said, my kids were up in their bedrooms by 7.38, the latest. My husband was coming in from work at six. So we always used to have dinner about six. So in the end, my daughter said, Mum, I'll cook, cook Sunday dinner. So I used to go out and buy, like, um, i buy chicken. Because I think chicken's one of the easiest pieces of meat to cook. You can't, you can't go wrong. 20 minutes per pound, plus an extra 20 minutes on top. All right? And check. So I told you all that, and then I used to buy what they call cheaty roast potatoes and frozen veg, right? And um, she used to do her own mash by peeling the potatoes and mashing them, or cooking and mashing. But she used to do some ding a ling, and she learned that way. Now she's a brilliant little cook. My sons, I love my sons cooking. He does a brilliant roast dinner. But washing, making him do the washing at 13, no. I did all the washing. When I was probably 16, I'd probably say, right, you know where the washing machine is, start doing it. Then you're about to use it. It just didn't. And I didn't force them to do it either. What's her normal routine for getting ready for bed? We give her her meds. Um. I'm sorry, take your time. Don't get too upset, Jane. No, that's right. Yeah. We get ready for bed. I'd give her her medication. Um, she would get in the shower. Uh, Take a long shower. I I understand. Like an hour plus. Yeah. Okay. Um, she loved it. Um, she'd get out. Uh, she'd get dressed. She'd let her hair towel dry for a while, and then she would brush it. We would watch some TV. She'd probably have a snack before bed as well. Okay. What what were kind of her nighttime uniforms? I mean, everybody kind of has their pajamas, but they're not necessarily pajamas. What was her routine nightwear? Uh, she really liked wearing uh, shorts. So she had a few pajama outfits, uh, but she really liked wearing shorts and uh, baggy t-shirts. Okay. How about uh, her routine getting ready for school in the morning? What's that about? Um, <clears throat> we'd wake up. The alarm would start ringing around 7.30. We'd snooze it up until 8 o'clock. Then she'd get up. Um, she'd get dressed. And then she'd lay back down in bed <laughs> while she would wait for me to make her breakfast. So she would, she's a breakfast eater? Yeah. Okay. Uh, she'd have breakfast. Then she would start, you know, with um, brushing her hair, brushing her teeth, putting on makeup. At night, I would give her her ADHD medications for school. Is that every day or just school days? Um, 
So it sounds like you're heading out like 8.45 or 9. Yes. And it takes like, what did you say, 15, 20 minutes to get to school? Yes. And first bell's 9.38? 9.20. Something like that? 9.20, okay. yeah. So on Monday the 26th, 7.30 seems like a really early time to depart to go to middle school, even if you're getting Mickey D's. What was the discussion about when Stefan and Madeline were going to leave on the 26th? There wasn't one. So you didn't know anything about these plans, or did you? Or I knew that they were going to go to McDonald's, but not 7 o'clock in the morning. That wasn't... Okay. I had assumed, like, 8 o'clock. Um, but even then, 8 o'clock is kind of early, like 8, 8.30, because you could just go to McDonald's, be done by 9, and then drop her off at school. But the McDonald's is right the block away from the school. So I Madeline's not driving, so she can eat while she's riding. Yeah. So I don't and she takes about an hour to get ready in the morning? Mm -hmm. Yes? Yes. So if they were leaving at 7.30, you, you'd think she'd have to get up at 6.30 to get ready and go through a routine, right? Yeah, it's extremely early. Okay. And is that what Stefan told you after this these events unfolded? Was that he, they left at early, like 7.30? What did he ever tell you? It was early. I can't remember the time. I think I dropped her off in front of her school sometime between 8.15 and 8.45. You say I. What do you mean by that? Did you drop her off that no, morning? No, I'm speaking. Sorry. I mean, okay. Uh, as was Stefan was telling me. Stefan let me know that he dropped her off sometime between 8.15 and 8.45 uh, on the road by the church close to her school. Mm -hmm. And I remember asking him, why so early? That's too early. School doesn't start until 9.30. Why did you drop her off that early? Oh, I don't know. We just left the house and made the time. I wasn't paying attention to the clock. Okay. Did Madeline ever have, like, effects from taking the hydroxyzine in the morning? That doesn't make sense. I made good time. Apparently, this is what he said. Uh, when she questioned why so early, he said, I made good time. I wasn't watching the clock. So how did you know you made good time then? That doesn't make sense. None of this of what he has said makes, well, what she was saying previously as well, even in this doesn't make sense. Like still be kind of sluggish? Yes. How often would that occur? Was that like every morning or not every morning? Not every morning. Um, if we happen to give her her medication later than normal and routine, that would happen. But. Um... Okay. And were there ever any instances where she had taken too much of the medicine? Perhaps you and Stefan had given her medicine? Not knowing that the other person had? Yes. That's happened once. How many more? Just once or more? I want to say once. Okay. Um, were you taking medicinal marijuana in pill form at any point for THC? Yes. And what do those pills or tablets or capsules look like? They're purple capsules. Did you ever suspect or confront Stefan about um, giving those medications to Madeline? No. So d during this incident where um, Madeline had been double dosed with hydroxyzine, do, do you recall any conversation you had with Stefan and inquiring as to whether or not he had accidentally given her any of your THC? That hadn't occurred to me. I I had asked him the day that. The one morning Maddie wouldn't wake up and, and get ready for school, and she was just out of it. I thought it was, I assumed it was medication related. Okay. But I didn't realize, I'm like, did this one medication hit her too hard because we gave it to her late? I called poison control. Mm -hmm. I needed to see what would happen. With, at this point, I think I had gotten Stefan to admit that he gave her a second dose of the sleeping meds as well, because he thought I had given it to her in the first place. Okay. Um, but that was with hydroxyzine. I didn't know anything about 
THC to marijuana. I'm just asking you. Oh. Um, I'm asking if you remember having that conversation. There is a conversation on your phone about you. You were relaying that Madeline said that she suspected that it was different, bigger pills, and you relayed that to Stefan and had a conversation with him. And if you don't remember it because it was a year ago, that's fine. Um, my next question is: um, You have two female roommates. And one of them has a child, a son that sleeps part time over there. Yes. And so my understanding is they're kind of it's like a I don't know what to call it, like a bed and breakfast. There's numbers on the doors upstairs. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I just to make it easier for the roommates, I just labeled each bedroom. So they're in two and three. Mm, yes. All right. Now bedroom number four. At one point, you told the police that your sister was staying with you, and that's why. Um, the sleeping arrangements were as they were. Was your sister ever staying with you? Or did I misunderstand what you said? No, no, my sister wasn't staying with me. Okay. Um. So let me uh, ask you this. Um, at what point did Madeline's bedroom kind of become the living room? When did that setup start? Uh, I think as soon as a few months into us moving back into that townhouse. And um, when would that have been? Let's say June of... The poor girl didn't even have her own bedroom. You know what I mean? If anything, Stefan should have been sleeping there. She should have been up in that fourth bedroom with all the flipping locks on to keep him out. You know what I mean? Christ. But no, you make your daughter sleep in that partitioned bit of the living room. But apparently she never slept there. She used to just use it as a chill-out area. Right, talk to her friends to play the games. You know what I mean? So, but even when Stefan come to stay, right, he should have been made, they should have moved all of his junk out of that room and put it downstairs and moved all her stuff up into that room. And then when he came to stay for the one night here or two nights there, whatever, he should have been made to sleep there. And Madeline should have had the bedroom upstairs. I could understand her wanting locks on the door then. I know like the housemates probably had locks on their door because they don't want people just walking in, you know what I mean, in their rooms. So, yeah, they would have locks on the door, but there's no need to have locks on that fourth door. It wasn't rented out. So, it's a shame. Poor girl, never had her own room. Sometime in 2022, but I'm not sure when. Okay. It's my understanding that... It's December of 2022 that you and Stefan kind of break up. Yes. But he still remains in the townhome. Yes. Why is that? So even though you're we broken up, I still considered him one of my best friends. Um, I wanted to give him the opportunity to live there, and he he had just he had gotten a job at Disney and was doing well. Okay. And I didn't want him to continue to lose that because he had been struggling for a long time to get a job or do anything with his own mental health issues. Okay. So I just wanted to give him a chance to like do something, be be something. So um did he pay rent? Yes. How much rent did he pay? Uh six hundred bucks a month. Right. Sorry. Here. No footsies. Um, <laughs> so in December of 2022, kind of when the breakup happens prior to that, what were the sleeping arrangements in your home? Was he sleeping in your bedroom as a couple? Yes. 
So who's in bedroom number four, uh-huh. if anybody? I think that room remained empty for a while. For a little bit, there was another roommate there, but uh, it remained empty for the most part. Um, and were your female roommates already there in two and three? Yes. Why doesn't Madeline have that bedroom four? I wanted her to have bedroom four, but my dad really wanted rent. Um, that, that whole unit that I live in is owned by my father. Okay. I really can't see the grandfather not wanting Maggie to have her own room. I can't see that. You know what I mean? Who, what grandparents would make their grandchild sleep in a, a makeshift bedroom in the living room? I wouldn't. In fact, I am known that if anyone comes to stay at my house, anyone, like when I've had my son and his daughter stay over, like at Christmas time and things like that, I've given my bed up. Right? Now, my daughter's due to come down in October. I'll give her the choice. Do you want to sleep in that bed or do you want to sleep in that room, the where the kids sleep because they're bunk beds and your son can sleep on the top bunk you can sleep on the bottom bunk but if you want you can sleep in here and if that's the case i'll go and sleep in that bottom bunk but if, like say my son and his wife was here that's the two bunk beds are taken up by the grandkids. kids they're in my bed so i'll sleep on the sofa i've always Given. Even when my son was getting married, my sister and her son came up, my nephew came up, right, and they got here a few hours before we had to go off to the wedding, and my nephew went to have a sleep, and I said, you can sleep in my room, or you can sleep in this room, and at the time, I had a double bed in the kids' bedroom, this was before the bunk beds came, and he went and slept in the kids' room. I said, okay. I said, Fiona, I said, this is your room for the night. And she said, no, 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 I can't take your room up. I said, yeah, you can. I said, I don't sleep very much during the night. I'm back, I'm up and down, I toss and turn. I said, well, at least sleep with me. I said, no, I toss and turn. I'm up, I don't sleep very good. I'd rather sleep on the sofa. And I gave my bed up. I've always done that. I would never have any of my grandkids sleeping in the living room. Would never. I'd always give my bed up to them. So let me ask you this. Do you pay your father anything to live there or does he just handle the collecting the rent from your rentees, lessees, no. whatever they are? Uh, I, I pay him rent as well. Okay. What, what, what do you pay for the rent? My portion of the rent was four hundred dollars a month. All right, and what did the two female roommates pay? Eight fifty and six fifty. Prior to Madeline, so she's getting a really reduced rent now because she had a like a master room, the king size bedding, en suite. You know what I mean? And she's only paying four something a month. The woman upstairs who only had who had the master a master bedroom with the ensuite, she was paying like eight hundred a month. And the other girl who's in bedroom, whatever, who didn't have an ensuite, was paying six hundred something a month. And then room four, Stefan, where he slept, he was paying six hundred a month. So she got a reduced rent there. I'm sure the father would have said, Well, I'll tell you what. Pay me six fifty a month. You know what I mean? Or six hundred dollars a month. Yeah? Then that can be Madeline's bedroom. Because she got a reduced rent anyway. And um having her own bedroom set up in the living room, where was she sleeping in that town home? 
uh, in in my bed with me. Okay. And this is during a time frame when you were together with Stefan. So is it the three of you every night? Well, we, when we had first moved in, it was just me and Maddie. So it was just me and her on the bed. Then I think we eventually got her her own bedroom. Um, Stefan moves in eventually. And then, yeah, at, the, at that point, it does become the three of us on the bed. Okay. So Madeline's 12. And she has her own bedroom. And how often is she sleeping in her own bed alone? Hardly. She doesn't like sleeping alone. And she doesn't like the living room. It's too big, too quiet. She says it would be too dark and then there would be spiders. She would see spiders, so. Um. I wouldn't love sleeping in that living room either. Because she says herself, it has mags come and go, different hours, come in late, go out early. You know what I mean? So. There's all them, there's them coming and going. And she's right by the front door. You know what I mean? It's no, I wouldn't like that either. So you say hardly, were there ever nights where she just slept alone in her bed? Or is it 100%? Because there's a difference between hardly ever and 100% to me. If she ever slept on that bed, it was like once. Okay. All right. So now you've broken up with Stefan in December of 2022, right? Mm -hmm. um, he's still paying rent and he's there full time in bedroom number four. Is that where he goes after you break up? No, he stayed in my room for a few months. Um, we've broken up, but we weren't sure how to discuss, the, discuss it with Maddie because it was the beginning or it was the middle of the school year and I didn't want to affect her in any way. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we just, I think it's a bad thing. Um, and you're moving out. Like everything was normally fine for the first six months. It worked, yeah. And then eventually she caught on. And then once she did, we admitted to her that we were broken up. And then, um, yeah, at that point is when he moved up to bedroom four. Okay. And once he moved up to bedroom four, were there instances where Madeline would sleep alone upstairs with him? I'm going to say I want you to think carefully before you answer, because obviously we've gone through your phone and we've seen all the conversations that you've had with Stefan. So it's clear that that's occurring. So I'm giving you the chance to answer the question. Yeah. I'm just trying to figure out how many times it's happened. Okay. Why are you allowing that to occur? I saw because she's selfish, inconsiderate, lying, POS as well. Stepping as someone that I completely trusted with my life, my child's life, um, I thought he had cared for her as a father would. He had been in her life for more than half of it, playing the father role. Um, I thought he cared for her the way I did. I, now, does there come a point in time in 2023 where you've kind of had enough of roommate ex-boyfriend Stefan and ask him to hit the road? Yes. And is that fair to say it was like October? Maybe yeah, like the end of October, because then then I gave him all of November and told him he had to be out by December first, kind of thing. But yeah, that's all. Well, isn't that a coincidence that he had to be out by December? Because his father said he who's paying the six hundred pound a month for him to stay in that house to have that room. The father said he can't afford to keep paying that. If he's not working, he can't afford to keep paying that money. Right? So he said, I want you back here. I'm not going to pay the rent no more. You'll have to, 
I want you to move back home. And this is a 37-year-old man, right? I want you to move back home, son. No. No. No, Dad. Yes, you are. So he wouldn't pay the rent no more. So he wanted him out by the end of November so that he wouldn't have to pay any more rent onwards. I believe what the father says over what she says. And then did you kind of ask him to leave a month earlier and it was a source of arguments? Uh, yes. Okay. So now at this point in time when he's being asked to leave, have you had any conversation with Maddie that mommy isn't together with Stefan anymore and this is kind of the ways of the world? Do you have that conversation with her? Uh, she had, by June, um, she figured it out already, so she knew we weren't together or anything like that. Um, so she, by December, yeah, she had already known he was leaving and... He was happy. Okay. But that was okay. Why is he coming back to visit after he's out? <sighs> We're still friendly with each other at this point. Christmas is coming up, and we wanted to spend Christmas together. So he comes up for a few days during Christmas, and then he does visit a few more times after that, but for the day, and it's to pick up packages. He keeps getting mail delivered to my house, packages, so he just comes up and picks them up. And when he comes to visit after he's been kind of kicked out, is he paying rent or how is this working? Or is he just coming to visit? He's just coming to visit. Is your father making any uh, arrangements to rent bedroom number four? Because this is his income that he's losing. Uh, yeah, we had had it. We, we had had like an ad um, posted to see if we can get any renters. Uh, so we were trying to rent it out, but then we had to stop. And what happens if you ended up renting room number four? Is Stefan going to still come up and visit you and sleep in your bed? I don't know. I hadn't even thought of it at that point. At one point you told No. I did say, look, if you're going to stop the night, you'll be sleeping in that bed there in the living room. Me and Maggie are in this room. You're on this, that bed. There. Right? You hadn't thought about it. You hadn't even moved any of his stuff out of that room. There was still stuff of his in that room. Told investigators that Stefan was quote unquote stuck down there until they could afford for him to come back. Were there plans for him to come back? We had discussed him coming back and living with me. We weren't sure if temporarily or like for me to help him out with the place for a little bit before he can find his own place and move out. Or we were also considering talking about living together as like a companionship. Um, I think with my best friend who's helping me out with my child. Because you, you told investigators that a lot of the reason your re relationship fizzled off with St Stefan was that your antidepressants. You, you had moved on to other people, had you not? Yes. And so despite having moved on with other people, you were still having Stefan come up and visit and there were plans to cohabitate with him again, potentially. Possibly, yes. Maddie had the opportunity to go visit her biological father in the fall out in Texas. Is that a yes? Yes. All right. Do you remember texting the biological father, hope nobody touches Maddie or tries shit or films her under the bathroom? Do you remember sending that text? No. No. The only person we know of who does things like that is Stefan. He actually put his phone under the bathroom door, right, upstairs bathroom door, 
and filmed the woman in the bathroom. Yep. I think she might have put a complaint in. Orange County Sheriff's Office back in February. Because that seems like a very oddly specific thing to text the father. So you didn't know anything about what was going on filming underneath bathroom doors? No idea. I don't know why I would have texted him. Okay. June 16th of last year, about 9.30 p.m. Um, actually, I, I can't actually think back to that. Okay. Um, I think around the time that Maddie was going to fly out to... Houston, mm -hmm. there had been an airline person that had gone into the bathroom and placed their camera on the toilet mm -hmm. to film. Um, and I remember thinking, I don't want Maddie, I'm afraid of Maddie being alone on the plane because what if an attendant does that to her and says, hold on, let me fix something in the bathroom. And in reality, they're setting up a camera because this did happen to a girl. Okay. So um, I want to say it may have been concerns over that. Okay. Now, June 16th of last year at 9.30 p.m. and 27 seconds, you texted Stefan this. Maddie's no longer sleeping with me. I can't risk it. What does that mean? That is weird. I have no idea. How often was Maddie sleeping with you? All the time. Uh, well, you keep on saying often versus all the time. Was it a hundred percent of the time or not a hundred percent of the time? If she wasn't, if she wasn't with my mom and she was with me, then yeah, she was sleeping with me. And if she's at mom, she's one hundred percent of the time sleeping with mom. With Your mom? mom, with my mom, or she does have her own room, I guess. Like a, a, there's another spare room she could use, but for for the most part, she prefers to sleep with my mom. Okay. Um, now, my understanding is that you had some sort of period tracker that you kept track of Madeline's period with? I had a calendar app that calendar I, would write, app. I would write what days she would get her period, yeah. And obviously, Madeline doesn't have a job, so she's not going out and buying the products that she would need if she had her period, right? You would have to do that for her? Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Yes. So, do you remember her using any of those products um, at all in February? Because I assume... You take the trash out, or does she take the trash out, or how does all this work? I take the trash out. Um, in February, no, I didn't notice her using any of her feminine hygiene products. Did you have any conversations with her about that? Uh, no, but I didn't notice until after everything. Like... No, because I'm the mother that don't give two hoots about my daughter. Okay? She's a young girl and you, you don't keep track, you're keeping a track of her menstruation, right, monthly menstruation, but, oh, that, that month you didn't even ask her, oh, wow, well, hold on, perhaps you, it's because, perhaps if you actually went in and cleaned your bathroom, sweetheart, because you had Monday off. But you didn't go in and pick up her dirty clothes that was on the bathroom floor, did you? No. So perhaps if she tidied up the bathroom and just put things away and tidied up and wiped the surfaces down and whatever, you might think, hmm, I haven't had to buy it. You might see the pads. You might see a pack of pads and think, I haven't had to buy another lem this month. Why not? You know what I mean? Because <sighs> it would have been due like at the beginning of February. And this all happens at the end of February. So she's almost due again in March. So you never had any conversations with her about not having her period at the beginning of February? No, there have been, she's had other periods that have been missed or like super late. So I just assumed this was going to be one of those situations again. Okay. Um, no, you didn't assume nothing. You didn't even think about it. You didn't even think about her. You know what I mean? You didn't assume nothing. Um, no, I didn't. Um, 
did you ever discuss her periods or lack of periods with Stefan? I don't think so. Um, it's my understanding that Maddie had to take Miralax. I'm familiar with that myself because of my daughter when she was little. Um, so she had constipation issues? Yeah. Would it ever cause her discomfort, physical pain, bleeding? Um. Well, bear in mind, this is mainly 18th and this interview was done. Dad have had the autopsy results come back by now. Right? Now, I'm knowing some states in the USA, if a woman is pregnant and she's murdered and the baby dies, then you get charged for the mother's murder and the child's murder. But some some states have, like, uh, if it's below so many weeks, then it's not classed as a pregnancy. So she could have been pregnant, but just in the very early stages, like four or five weeks, maybe. Yes. And how are you aware of that? Uh, she would tell me. Uh, there have been moments. So we've gone to, we've gone to doctor's appointments. They've run a lot of tests on her. They told me why her body is doing what it's doing. But um, she's shown me, like, she's shown me, like, uh, if there was blood or if she's in the bathroom and she just can't go, like, it's stuck. <laughs> she showed me that, too. So Did she ever specifically seek treatment for tears or bleeding or anything due to her bowel movements? No, I don't think so. Tears or anything like that, no. Okay. I don't think there was ever a... a On February 26th, the whole purpose of Stefan coming and taking Madeline to school was so that you could get some sleep. You had missed your medication Saturday night, so on and so forth, right? Yes. Is there any particular reason Stefan couldn't have driven your car to take Madeline to school and therefore not embarrass her and he could just drop her off normally? Yes, but um, because he's on my car insurance, I was very nervous to let him drive my car. You did let him drive your car after this occurred though, right? Yes, but he was very insistent because he wanted to go look for Maddie and he had a, a spare on his car because he had a flat, so he couldn't drive his car. So he just really wanted to go out. So I just let him, but I wasn't comfortable with it. During your previous interviews, and you did it once today, you kind of interchanged I, we, or Stefan dropping Madeline off at school. Did you see Madeline at all on February 26th, 2024, that Monday? Yeah. Do you know anything about how she died? No. Did, did Stefan tell you anything about how she died? No. Did Stefan tell you about his plans to go back down to Northport in your car that Wednesday morning? Mm -hmm. Got any questions, Mark? Mm -hmm. I'm getting close. <clears throat> I'm going to jump through because I was making notes as we we're going on. So, how frequently did Stefan come up here after he moved back to Northport? I'm going to say. How many he, times total do you think he came back here? Two to three times. Do you remember if those were around specific dates? One was like the week of Christmas. I can't remember when the other one was. Was Stefan in town the week or two prior to this last time he came? I don't remember. It's possible, but I don't remember. Everything is becoming a blur. Do you remember sending him a text message asking if he can babysit Maddie while you go have lunch with your friend? This was a few weeks before. Mm -hmm. I remember, I remember going out a few weeks before. 
I don't remember asking him to babysit. I don't know where he was. Did you ever go to lunch with your friend? And he babysat her? I, I did go to lunch with my friend, but I don't think he was, I don't think he was here. I think Maddie stayed home alone for a few hours. Okay. When you mentioned Maddie caught on about you guys being broke up, how did that happen? What, like, what did she say or? I forgot, we were, me and Stephanie were having a conversation. She was like, you guys broken up? And we kind of looked at her and we're like, why do you ask? She goes, because you guys are kind of acting like you're broken up. You guys haven't hugged and kissed in a long time. <laughs> Kind of How do you think she felt about that? Fine. She didn't act sad or, or happy or anything. You're just like, whatever. Right. Now, you mentioned, and you mentioned to me before, too, that you found her phone on her dresser in, like, her little bedroom area. Does she have a specific spot where she plugs in her phone? to try? How does she charge her phone? Um, so on her side of my bed, um, she's got a, a long charger. She'll connect it there to charge. Um, don't know how she charged it that night though. Don't know if she took her charger and moved it to the room upstairs. Not sure. How do you charge your phone? I charge my phone with my charger next to me on my side of the bed. Okay, is it one that you plug in or it's a magnetic one? Okay. Um, now, when you go to bed at night, is there any kind of routine that you do with your phone? If you're texting, look on TikTok or whatever, and you go to go to bed, you just set your phone down and go to sleep, or what's that routine like? I'll TikTok until I start dozing off, and then I'll put my phone in the charger. Make sure my alarm's on, and then I'll, yeah, just lay down, close my eyes, and hope not to think of too much, just fall asleep. Okay, that night, Saturday or Sunday night, when you guys went spending this half hour of time together, was all you that you were doing was talking about gifts and counting her money, or were you guys doing anything else? asking her for more details about the party and to tell me like what I missed. But she seemed like she had a really good time. When you got home from work that day, where were where was everybody? I think everyone was in my room. Hanging out in my room. Okay. Everybody meaning uh, Maddie and, and stuff and were okay. sorry. All right. Um now it's obvious that you and Stefan communicate via text message and phone calls and stuff like that. What is Google Meet? What is Google Meet? Mm -hmm. That is like Google's version of FaceTime. So just face chatting. Okay. Uh, video chatting. Okay. Um, when the birthday party, when her birthday party was planned, was this planned before you got your job or after? The birthday party? Mm -hmm. I think it was planned before, because once I saw my schedule and I saw that I, it was during a training day, and I, mm -hmm. I, I wasn't going to call out. I considered re, rescheduling the party, but my family was insistent to just keep it that day. I said, okay. okay. Uh, all right, so <clears throat> Stefan moves out of his room, and... I think you mentioned that your dad had plans on renting that room again to somebody else. Is that right? Yeah. How was that room set up? How was Stefan's room set up after he moved out? Pretty much the, Besser, same. Pretty uh, much the same. The bed was in the same location, the, okay. TV, uh, the TV, the dresser, the desk, and the mini fridge. Everything stayed in the same location. Okay. Was the bed and did it have comforter, blankets, and all that stuff on it? Or... Uh, when he moved out, everything was empty. There was a mattress protector cover on it. Mm -hmm. um, but I had clean sheets and clean bank blankets to put on, like they're available. So where were they available? In the closet. Okay. Um, and I, I did. Yeah. I don't know they were there. Do. Do you know if he made the bed? 
I don't know, but I'm going to assume. I don't know. What did the blankets look like that would be used to make that bed? They would be white, white cotton um, linen sheets with they're white, but they're white stripes, different mm -hmm. shades of white. So mm -hmm. white stripes going down it. Um, that was a fitted, a fitted cover, then a sheet, and then the pillowcases. And it should have been like a warm blanket in the closet somewhere. The same color, white or Maybe gray. Okay. When you say there's pillowcases, how many pillows were on the bed? Sure. I know that we had taken things out of that room before. I don't know if we used those pillows. I'm not sure what pillows were up there. Okay. Did you ever go into the room after you discovered that she was missing? Did you go upstairs to that bedroom? No. Okay. So when you go to sleep in your room, and you're either with Maddie or without Maddie or with Stefan. Is your door open, closed, lights on, lights off? When I go to sleep? Mm -hmm. um, so I have a cat. I can't shut the door. I have to leave it cracked. Mm -hmm. So it stays cracked um, with a little, like a little. I must admit, I've got two cats. But even before I had my cats, uh, because I live on my own. I live on my own. None of my doors were shut. <laughs> the bathroom door was always open. The living room door is always open. The kitchen door is always open. Right? My bedroom door was always open. And so was my ch the grandchildren's room always open. But now, because I've got my cats, uh, I keep the grandkids' bedroom door shut when they're not here. And I keep my balcony door shut so that they can't get in here and my bathroom door is now shut to stop them getting in my bathroom because I know I've got to decorate in there because they've been helping me strip the wallpaper so now I thought it's a good job I need decorating isn't it because you two cats between you have been stripping the wall off so yeah I've now shut the door I keep the door shut so they can't get in there to do any more damage to my wall until I get round to doing it properly. But, um, you know, they've got the room of the house. They've got the kitchen. The live In the daytime, the balcony door is open. So they've got the kitchen, the living room, the balcony, the hallway, my bedroom. They've got a big area to run about in because it's not a small flat. It's a big flat. So, yeah, my doors are always open. Like a door stopper behind it so it doesn't open all the way because my cat will just run it up over. Um, yeah, but we sleep with the door cracked. Okay, lights on, lights off? Uh, lights off with a YouTube video playing in the background, making playing rain sounds. Okay, would that, would the screen be illuminated or is it something where a screen, like a phone, where the screen goes black and it still plays? It goes black, yeah. It's still okay. Um, do you remember it happened that night if you were doing listening to those YouTube videos or probably was. Could you imagine if a police officer said to me, Well, right, when you go to bed, what's your routine? Well my routine is the doors are all open by my children's no grandchildren's bedroom and my bathroom door and my balcony door. Those three doors are shut now when I go to bed. And then I go into my bedroom, I've, I've had my wash, I've got my pyjamas on, I go into my bedroom, and then I put my TV on, I put YouTube on, and I fall asleep listening to crime documentaries. <laughs> Could you imagine their faces? It's like, oh my lord, she's one of those 24-7 crime people that watch crime and listen to crime 24-7. Yep, I'm one of them. I listen to it 
does it shut off automatically? Um, around like four or five a.m., but then I'll I'll notice and I'll press play again. I'm done. I'm done. I thought she said once she took her medication and she went to sleep, she went into a deep sleep. Cross. I wish I. You know how much deep sleep I get a night? I'm lucky if I get an one hour deep sleep. Hold on, hold on. That's my alarm going off. Okay. Is it fair to say that you're easily woken up or no? By it sounds like that or? Now, the purpose of you telling or having Maddie sleep with Stefan upstairs is because you told me before that you needed a good night's sleep. If you needed this kind of sleep previously to when Stefan wasn't there, what would happen? You mean if Stefan wasn't there and I needed this good night's sleep? Mm -hmm. um, it depends. Um, if I had missed my meds the way I missed them that night and I wasn't feeling, or I was feeling just how I was feeling. I'm not sure if I would have had her sleep, it, it's have her sleep with me on the other side of the bed or if I would have sent her upstairs to the guest room. But um, she sleeps like a monkey. She sleeps, she rolls, she'll, she'll, she'll start on one end of the bed and end up on top of me by the end of the night. And she's a gymnast, I guess. But, um, have you ever sent her upstairs to sleep? No, not like not for any of these reasons. Have you ever sent her upstairs to sleep by herself? Oh, mm -hmm. no. Okay. I'm going to need to wrap this up. Okay. One more question. Um, does anybody use your phone other than you? Uh, no except for the day that we were sitting in front of my house and um, forensics was in the house. That was the only time I've ever, ever let anyone use my phone and that was Stefan. Stefan had my phone. What about, do you wear an Apple Watch? Yes. Does it track any of your movements or anything like that that you know of? Do you sleep with your watch on? No, I hardly ever put it on, honestly. Alright, do you have anything else? Do you have anything real quick, Daniel? Yeah. Do you have anything that you think we should know, Matt? Okay. Good down there? Yeah, I'm good. Alright, it's 10.06 a.m. We will conclude this investigative interview with uh, Yuma Soto. Thank you. I'm sorry. Right, no. Do you notice how she's she took her time answering some questions? But I just think that's Jane. You know what I mean? But she's a lot more yes, no, can't remember. You know what I mean? She wasn't committing herself to any questions, really. And I'm sorry, love, but they've got, as he's told you, they've downloaded your phone and they've downloaded his phone. So they've got all the text messages. So when you sit there and say, no, I didn't speak to him again that night. Well, we know that isn't true. Because they've got the text message. Tell Maggie to go to sleep now. Then you text back down. She's, she's made a nest or making a nest to go to sleep. And you text back saying something like, okay, that's good. And you can't remember that. But the police have got that information. I still can't believe... The only thing I can think of is they want her to go up as a witness for the prosecution. And to state things like when he came in and got the dog out to put the lead on. And things like... 
uh, res doing a reset on his phone. But I still think I I can't understand why she can even though she says the reason I wanted him to come over to look after Magdalene and the dog is because I was working some night shifts that week and I wanted to be, to be able to spend as much time with Magdalene as possible. But if I went, she went to her, my mother's, I wouldn't see her. Well, she wouldn't have to go till Wednesday night. She had all Monday evening to spend time with her, Tuesday morning, Tuesday evening, Wednesday morning. You know what I mean? Even a few hours, an hour or so on Wednesday evening. For going to work, if you're back at work on Wednesday. And she only worked part-time. So she wasn't there, like, Monday to Friday, eight hour shifts. She's only part-time. So if she did two shifts a week at, say, eight hours a shift. So... I don't know what time the night time shift would start. She's uh, worked in uh, one of the Disney hotels, was he? Can't remember. But even so, she didn't need him there. That would just be a piece of... Ugh. What she says is just pure shit. And I think they just keeping her, they've wiped the plate, plate clean because they want her to go as a witness against him. Why? To answer certain questions. And I swear to God, can't wait for that to happen if that's the case. Because oh, she will crumble. If the defence team are any good, she will crumble. We'll see the waterworks come on. And I did mention the other night, I said, I wonder if they're going to, if they'll ever do a deal with him on the murder charge. Yeah? Even though they've got a witness of him, of his car being in that vicinity, they've got uh, camera footage and all that lot of him coming and going to that area and driving to different areas around there. They've got him using her car because she stated he used her car early hours Tuesday morning to do a drive around to have a look for Madeline. What he's going to find at 3am in the morning when it's pitch black, I'm doing that now. Right? So, oh, so they've got all that against him. I don't know if they've got anything in the car. Oh, they've got him on video, haven't they? Putting rubbish in the big trash bins there. And the one bag they pulled out had a one white crock. A school bag, and she was so much. She seemed more upset the other night on that video I was showing. The other night, I think it was on the for the twenty ninth of February when they interviewed her. Mm. The twenty ninth one. She seemed more upset about the bag than she did her own flipping daughter. Even after they'd shown her a photograph of her daughter being in the front of the car, and she said she's sleeping there, and, and they've gone, is she? And then she turned around and went, is she dead? You know what I mean? I'd be wanting to get leave that place. I'd be going. Look, I can't talk. To, I can't talk no more. There's too much going on, mate. Because all I can think about at the moment is wanting to smash his head with a spade and dig in, dig a hole and bury him. That's what I'd be saying to the police. I can't talk about this. I need. I need to get away from here. You know what I mean? It was. 
I'm going I'm going to explode because if I see him, I will go for him. Because at the moment all I want to do is kill him. But you don't get no reaction out of her when it comes to him and her daughter. Oh, the sex is okay. The sex is okay. But you're killing her daughter. No, she don't believe that. She don't believe he could do that. What? Are you for real, woman? And I think the reason it took so long to get this interview and the fact that she was subpoenaed to go to this interview is uh, her lawyer is saying, made the deal. Look, whatever she said in the past is cleared. They'd made the deal. Right? And I think from round about she had a meeting with them on March the 1st. And that was a couple of hours before they had to find Madeline. Right? And two days, three days after they arrested Stefan. And then we never heard anything else of her until now, until that like the 18th. So I think she was in some sort of um, rehabilitation clinic, health clinic somewhere. You know what I mean? Because while she's in somewhere like that, the law enforcement can't speak to her. They cannot speak to her. So once she's come out of there, they've subpoenaed her then to go to this interview. So... I still think she's lying. Still think she's lying. And I think she should be sent down for uh, child neglect, if anything, because she did not care about her daughter. She didn't. I don't care how much she sits and says, I love my daughter, I want my daughter back. You didn't love her. If you did, you could see what was going on right under your own flipping knows and you get no sympathy from me on this channel right Every, there could be someone come on this channel and they come and say well i feel bad for them that's fine that's your choice that's your opinion you're not changing my opinion right and there's a lot of people that agree are in the same sort of way of thinking they are just disgusted that she's not going to get you. Unless she comes out with something now. Right? That she never mentioned before. Like say she adds to her story again. That she didn't say before. And it's all new. I'd be like, oh no. She never said that before. Boom. Now have her then. All those little charges they've like, wiped under the carpet. All those little charges are going to come back from underneath the carpet and they'll have her. So she can't afford to add to a story anymore. She can't afford to lie for that scumbag. The fact that she left that meeting, that police interview, on the 28th of February, after seeing some of the photos of that POS with her, with her daughter, and she still sat there believing he couldn't hurt her daughter. He will never hurt his, her daughter. But he was hurting your daughter. He was. But you, she still sat there adamant that, you know. So she goes out. What does she do? Phones his father and says, you need to get him a, a lawyer. Why? Well, he's been grooming my daughter for two years. Well, no, love. It was actually four years and more, maybe. They can only go back as far as four years. Maybe more. I reckon it, she was at least seven and a half, eight, when he was start grooming her. I really do. Perhaps he had nothing on her. Perhaps he had no photos of her there. Because don't forget, remember that time he said, um... <coughs> In one of the interviews he did, that Madeline did do something once with a phone. And she got told off, but she wasn't penalised. She wasn't, right? And I'm thinking, 
What was it she did with her phone? You know, was she taking photos of herself? He said, but she was a lot younger then. So she, she could have been about eight. Yeah? Eight, nine. And she's thinking, well, if he can take photos of me, why can't I take photos of me? And I think that's probably what they caught her doing. You know, if uh, a child, a young child was doing that, I'd be thinking, I up, why are you doing that? Why would you even think of doing that, sweetheart? You know what I mean? So, it's like once I remember my grandson said something to me, and I mean, why would you say that, sweetheart? Oh, he said, we're going to the big park a couple of months back now. Before summer, before the summer holidays, and um, we'd go in there, and he said, "But they, they'll uh, pick on me, they and bully me." I said, "And laugh at me, oh, they laugh, they laugh at me." And I went, "I went what?" I went, "Sweetheart, why would they laugh at you? Why would the children at this park laugh at you?" So someone. Either at the school, and I think he was in the nursery then, right? And I didn't like that nursery where he was. There was crap, they didn't know what they are doing, they didn't know how to work with him. They just literally singled him out every time. Anyway, so I think they was laugh the children, there was some children in that nursery laughing at him. For whatever reason. For what... You know what I mean? And I just think he thought they'd do the same at the park. And I told his mum and dad about it. And I said, oh, okay. So, if there's anything wrong, the best person who's who's going to get any anything out of Ellis, if there's anything wrong, there's one person he will open up to and talk to. If there's anything wrong, and that's his auntie D. He calls her DD, auntie DD. He could. You know what I mean? He's the only one. Him and Olivia are the only ones that I like to call her Didi. I don't like her being called Didi by adults. Her name isn't Didi. Her name's Dingies. Simon calls her D. I call her D, but I do not call her Didi. No, no. But the only ones allowed to call her Didi are my grandson and my granddaughter. Aye, but she. He will talk to her. If there's any problems, I know he will talk to her. So, anyway, I don't know what your opinions are on that. I don't know how you feel about that. Um, leave us a comment on X. What do you think about, um, like, let's see, everything you've said in the past, all those lies you've made up about seeing your daughter, not seeing your daughter about taking her to school, not taking her to school, and all this being wiped under the mat. What do you think about it? I think it's disgusting because she's selfish. She admits it herself in the one interview when they asked her why she would send her daughter upstairs to that room. And she said, because I'm selfish. I was selfish. And I know that now. Oh, yeah, too late now, love. Too late. Right? So, what I'll do... Um, I'll either do a video to... I don't know if I can get a video done tomorrow. I'll try and get a video done before I go and get my nephew. And I'll show the interview of the father, the bio father, and the interview with the housemate. And I'll have that put out then for Saturday. No, for tomorrow night. If I get it done tomorrow. If not, it'll be Saturday. One of the nights, Friday or Saturday, I'll get a video done up and work on that, okay? Can do so much tomorrow. Pause it. 
and come back and do so much. On Saturday, perhaps when my grandson's having a quiet moment in the afternoon, I can nip in here and get some done. But we'll see. If not, I'll go live Sunday night and we'll do it then. Anyway, until then, thank you all for being here. If you're watching on replay, please give this video a like. Uh, share. And if you haven't yet done so, please subscribe. It's all for free. If you like what you hear and see, and you want to hear more, then please subscribe. I go out nightly every night, but a Wednesday night now. I don't go live on this channel on a Wednesday night. On a Wednesday night, I go live on my other channel, my Diamond Art channel. So I go live now, um, say, five nights a week. Five nights, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Between five, four and five nights a week. If I can't go live, I'll try and get a video out. Anyway, until then, thank you all for being here. And I'll see you later.